Hi guys, it's MJ the student actuary and welcome back to another video where we're going to be looking at a probability paradox. This is video number four and we have returned back to the game show. So remember in video one we were in a game show where we got to choose between two boxes. Well, in this video our game is a little bit different. What we need to decide is we need to decide whether we're going to open door number A, door number B, or door number C. Now this is the famous Monty Hall uh, problem. And this confused a lot of people. In fact, a lot of PhD people and even mathematicians got very upset about this whole little probability paradox, which I'm going to show you. So we're going to go through it, and then I'm going to talk to you about something which seems very weird. So... How does this game work? Well, what you get chosen, or what you have to do, is you have to choose either door A, door B, or door C. And you're told that behind one of the doors is a beautiful La Ferrari. Okay. Let me draw a beautiful... Okay, that's not a beautiful Ferrari. But you know what I mean. That is, that's, that's a Ferrari. Let me write Ferrari so people know that that's a Ferrari. And behind the other two doors are goats. Okay, how do you draw a goat? They've got like little horns. Okay, so you've got the Ferrari and you have these little goats. So we're assuming that everybody wants the Ferrari, unless you're like motorphobic and you know you're scared of cars and you live on a farm and you want some goat cheese. We're assuming everybody wants the Ferrari. So this is what we want to do. We want to get the Ferrari and we're told that it's behind one of these doors. Now, depending on which door we choose, because there are three doors and the Ferrari could lie behind any one of them, we know that whatever we choose, we have a one in three probability. At this exact moment, we don't have any other information about the doors. So we say, oh, you know what, let's go for door number C. But then the game show host comes on and he's going to say something rather interesting. He says he knows where the Ferrari is. He says he's 100% sure that he knows where the Ferrari is. And what he's going to do to prove it is he's going to open one of the doors and show that there's a goat behind it. So he comes to door number A, he rips open door number A, and lo and behold, there is a goat. Okay. Bah, whatever sound goats, goats make. Okay. And the goat runs away, it's set free. But now he comes to you and he says, you need to make a decision. Do you want to stick with door number C or do you want to switch to door number B? What is your decision going to be? Maybe pause the video for like five seconds and make up your mind. Okay, cool. And pause, we're back inside the video. So remember, if we stick with Door number C, we have a 1 in 3 probability. If we switch to door number B, remember we've now got two, two doors, so should it not be a half? Well, it can't be a half because a third plus a half means that there's still one sixth remaining. So it can't be a half, which means... A third minus one, because remember the probability does not change for door number C. You know, you've chosen door number C, he's opened the one door, you still have a third chance. Door number B becomes two thirds. Now, that might irritate you for a bit, and I'm going to let you hold on to that irritation, because let's say your beautiful girlfriend comes along. Da, da, da. And the game show host says to her, she comes in late, you know, like, like most, most girlfriends, they come in late, and she, she hasn't seen that the game show host open door number A. If she was presented with door number B and door number C, then the chances that door number C is going to be a half to her, and it's going to be, B is going to also be a half to her. Because that's what it looks like. It looks like there's... A Ferrari behind one door and there's a goat behind the other door and there's two doors. It's a half and it's a half. But her probabilities are wrong. And this is why 
inside of information on the stock market is very much restricted because if you have extra information, it means you can more accurately come to the true probabilities, which means you can come to more or less this decision over here, which is a third and two thirds. Now, why this works, let's actually, let's maybe spend a little bit of time explaining this. Okay, maybe let's do a little mini simulation. Let's say we have the three doors, A, B, and C. And let's say that that Ferrari is actually behind door C. The game show host is going to be opening a door, which means he's either going to be opening door A or he's going to be opening door B. But there's also the chance that the Ferrari is behind door B, okay? In which case, he is only going to be opening door A because you've chosen door C, so he doesn't want to open your door and, sp and spoil the fun, and doesn't want to open door B because there lies the Ferrari, which means if we look over here, B has got the lowest chance of getting picked between doors A and door B, which therefore means that door B in the scenario has a higher chance of having the beautiful La Ferrari. I think I need to do a drawing course. Um, but there we go. What we can see here is it, this all, all comes down to the fact that the game show host knows. It's because he knows that he's adding extra information, which is now not altering the probabilities. Because now this is, this is another thing about probabilities that gets everybody confused. Is they're saying, how can you know, the girlfriend see a half and a half and you're seeing a third and two thirds, you know, you know, you might you might be tempted to say, surely all probabilities must be the same. But in a matter of fact, probabilities are used when we have uncertainty. Okay, the Ferrari already is behind one of these doors, which means the true probabilities, instead of it being say A B C, a third, a third, a third. The true probabilities is actually 0, 1, 0, if it is actually behind Ferrari. We don't know the true probabilities, and so we estimate the perceived probabilities. So our perceived probabilities are one-third, two-third, and you can see that two-thirds, one-third is closer to the true probability than our girlfriend's view of a half and a half because two-thirds is bigger than one-third. And, and this is why it got to everyone, because everyone was convinced that probabilities are certain. You know, they, they're in the realm of certainty, but it's wrong. Probabilities exist in the uncertainty realm. In fact, everything after it's happened is certain, which means the Ferrari is definitely behind door B. It's just because we don't know that because whenever we lack information, then uncertainty arises and we have to con you know, contemplate for, sorry, compensate for uncertainty by introducing these estimate probabilities. And this is why it freaked everybody out, because people didn't understand the fundamentals of probability. But like always, let's leave it into the comment section if this was your situation and there was door B and there was door C, would you stick with your decision or would you switch? And how, how badly would you kick yourself if you switched to door B and then discovered that the Ferrari actually was behind door C? Because remember, there is still a chance. There's still a third of a chance that the Ferrari is behind that door. So this little game show host, he's, he's been playing little mind tricks with us in video one, and he's returned to haunt us now in video four. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and please remember to like, share, uh, subscribe, and do all those other youtube -y stuff, and I will see you again for another Probability Paradox sometime soon. Yeah, so thanks guys so much for watching. Cheers.